So we're at Adastral Park, it's BT's R&D headquarters, and we're here for the operators' Secure Tomorrow Festival. I'm talking with Howard Watson, he of course is BT's Chief Security and Networks Officer. So Howard, thanks very much for joining us here today. Incredible event, I mean there's just, I mean there's like a thousand people here or something. It's brilliant Ray, and thank you for coming here today, along with you and your colleagues. Great to see you again. Oh great. Um, so listen, as part of the event today, uh, BT announced some latest stats uh, on what it's seeing on its networks and also the networks of its uh, enterprise customers. And incredible stat, like 200 million signals of cyber attacks per day, more than 200 million. I mean, that's just an incredible number, but I mean, is it really that incredible? Is this what BT's been dealing with for years? We've been trying to find what's a great way of representing you know, that trend uh, as the security environment gets ever more difficult to, uh, you know, to continually defend for ourselves and for our customers. And so we have this great insight because we have all the networks and we can see hostile events as they traverse that network. So that's essentially what we are measuring there. Okay. So, I mean, uh, BT, I think it's fair to say that BT has been at the forefront, regarded as one of the network security uh, leaders for, for quite a few years now. Um, can you just talk to us about the, the evolution of uh, BT's network security strategy? I mean, how, how has that changed in the past 10 years? Uh, I think it's, 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 I mean, it's certainly evolved over that period. Uh, and it, don't forget, it's, it's for networks, but it's also for how we secure our IT and how we secure uh, the enterprises of our customers. Um, and so, and each of those are secured in, have changed in a slightly different way. So for example, over that 10 year period, we've been from very much workloads being on premise in our data centers, in customers data centers. We then went through a period where customers look for other companies, including BT, to host their workloads in our data centers. Then we've been through the era of it all being pushed into cloud. Uh, I would suggest it's starting to come back a little bit. Um, you know, nations are wanting sovereignty. Uh, Europe's wanting sovereignty of its data. So I think we're starting to see a little bit of a trend of a bit fewer workloads going into the cloud. So, however, we have developed solutions for all those, on-premise security, across network security, but also, you know, cloud security, and importantly, being able to secure your individual application. So, I mean, as I mentioned, BT has been providing these kind of services to enterprises for years and also using uh, AI and very sophisticated tools to, to track cyber threats for, for years. And a couple of years ago, you put this all together and gave it a name, Eagle Eye, uh, for that service. Uh, can you tell us how that has evolved? Has that proved very popular in the enterprise domain? Uh, is this something that is helping a lot of companies to you know, defend their businesses? I mean, my go-to-market colleagues can talk to you about the success that they're having with their customers on Eagle Eye. From my perspective, this is a platform that we use to pull together some of the best solutions for a company's security needs. It also means that, you know, when, when I'm doing research here in Adastral Park, and when that research is on both AI, but also on security and if I think of the research these days, it's telecoms focused, AI focused, security focused, and quantum as well now increasingly. We now have a platform to sort of navigate how we focus that research. And again, Eagle Eye is very much built on the insight that we get into our networks. So, you know, the 2000 events a second that we talked about earlier, that richness of data is fed into that platform. We can then you know, create insight from that which we can share with our customers and that's what the platform enables for our customers. Um, so I mean, you know, BT has been working uh, using AI machine learning uh, and, and now is using uh, quantum secure networking technologies. Uh, all of these new technologies evolving, you're bringing them into the, the security domain. So what does that mean for the role of the, the chief information security officer at BT, how is that role evolving? Because that's something you've taken on now, isn't it? Basically? Yes, it is. Um, well, I mean, the great thing is that we had the foresight to combine the chief security officer role with the chief networks officer role. So in my role, looking at security and networks, we also said security first, 
um, in, in my job my job title and that was really to create a message to the organization because how networks networks and security have if we're you know, if we really think about it, being quite different disciplines, uh, mainly across the industry. We saw that coming together probably four or five years ago and have focused really hard on driving that together. It's really interesting to see now what some of our vendor partners in the industry are doing and how they're driving a crossover between their security and networks. Just look at some of the latest changes at Cisco, because uh, that's pushed their security and networking organizations together. So I think we had some early uh, foresight into doing that. Uh, a lot more to do, a lot of capability. However, things like 5G, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about one aspect of 5G from a security point of view, which was a particular vendor. Really, that's not given us enough time to talk about the inherent improved security that is in the 5G network, particularly about how you authenticate across that network. So bringing that to life for our customers is a critical part of my role. And, and also, as these technologies uh, develop and evolve so quickly, you know, to what extent uh, are you having to work with uh, third party partners and, and to what extent are you able to uh, develop particular services or applications in-house to be able to meet the needs of your customers? It's quite, it's quite interesting uh, if you compare the two disciplines of networks and security. So in networks, you know, we have the problem that we want more diversification. Uh, particularly in mobile, where we have two European, op two European partners. The opposite problem exists on the security side, I think. They might not forgive me for saying this, but there are too many. <laughs> I need some consolidation. I, I'm, I'm, I welcome the trend where they're moving towards a platform place. So the security supply chain is moving very much from lots and lots of best of breed solutions into a few larger ones who are building a platform. And that makes it a bit simpler to navigate and to work with fewer partners to develop that deep relationship and how we can build true synergies between our security solutions and our network solutions. And also how we can share uh, in research and innovation. So I think the trends are encouraging there. I don't want it to go as far as we've gone on the network side, down to only two though. Right, right. Uh, because we do need that diversification of supply. And do you look to the team here at Adastral Park to develop internal solutions? Is that part of what you're asking them to do? Yes, developing internal solutions has always been something uh, that we've done at BT. You know, we spend a lot on research and development. Um, and a lot of that is the development part, so that is writing software, you know, working with our hardware vendors and adding components to that. That will always be a big part of what we do. We try and make sure we focus it on where we can build a competitive edge. Uh, you know, if you can buy it in the marketplace and it doesn't differentiate me as a supplier to my customers, then let's buy it in the marketplace. But, you know, in the area of OSS systems historically, uh, or some of the mobile applications. I think now in some of the sustainability uh, solutions, the ability to switch networks off for part of the day, you know, we're developing our own solutions there at the moment. So it will continue to be a big part of what we do. So uh, Howard, let's just finish on AI because it permeates everything that everybody's talking about these days, not only in this industry, but um, you know, the developments in AI are incredibly rapid. There's something new uh, every week. And I guess uh, BT's customers are looking to, for BT to be on top of all of this. How difficult is it to keep up with developments there and also integrate new AI tools and applications into your security platform so that you are up to speed? It's a great enabler for us, first and foremost, for threat intelligence. So, uh, you know, over on the uh, BT research stand here, we're talking about a capability that we've built that can scan online articles really quickly, look for common threat actors that are often mentioned in online articles and start to uh, summarize that so that we don't have to trawl through them all as individuals. But also, you know, it's great for taking those threats that we've talked about, the 2,000 every second, trying to find common patterns amongst those, enabling uh, the people, the humans, in our cyber operations centers to visualize uh, what's happening. So it's 
brilliant in that respect and uh, we're starting to integrate that into the Eagle Eye product set that we talked about earlier. Uh, so we can make that available to our customers. But you're right, there's a bit of an arms race going on uh, because the, the threat actors uh, are also starting to use AI. I mean, particularly around spear phishing is the one at the moment. So that's creating a email which is so realistic to you um, that it's so difficult not to click on. So what we've got to do there is protect against the click having happened rather than you know, really avoiding that, assuming it's going to happen. So that's just one example of where I'm seeing already uh, particularly generative AI being used against us. So we'll keep our defences up and we've got to keep working on it. Okay, and do you feel that you're ahead of the game? Well, I one feel step like we're ahead. winning, we are winning, we are winning. Well, that's a very positive note to end on, Howard. Thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, great insights into what BT is doing in the security realm. Thank you, Ray.